May God make us a channel of blessings. Amen. Furthermore, we are going to sing together now, CGS number one, and the tune is taken from CGS 587. The tune is 587, CGS. We are singing CGS number one, Glory Be to God the Father. Before we sing, we want to thank God that uh, he has given us another day of worship. We started with the pianist giving us a prelude, that is Brother Loki Odumbaku, and after which the choir sang for us, let's uh, just praise the Lord, composed by William Gator. And make me a blessing, which we have just listened to now, by, um, uh, sung by two of our choristers, Sister Faith Udozen and Sister Michelle Madujutimi. May God make us a channel of blessing. Amen. Now it's our turn to sing. Let's begin with number one, CGS 1. We we'll listen to the tune and sing in the three verses. from the same hymn book now, four, four, and one, 441. Rejoice, for Jesus reigns and thrown in human hearts. We'll take the first uh, two verses, and after which we'll take another one again. 441, the first two verses, after the two. <laughs>
let's try another number 665 665 cgs 6 6 and 5 my soul is so happy in jesus Amen. may god make our soul happy in jesus Amen. may god make our soul happy in jesus Amen. that's why we come here yeah. we want to be happy yeah. and god will make us happy yeah. let's listen to this tune and see if we can sing the first three verses Choruses in our CGS, the, no, the last number, I guess, 100 chorus, 100. Hallelujah. Let's see whether that one will uh, bring up our spirits. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then what a friend we have. We we'll sing that two chorus after the two.
last one before we are led in prayer will be number 990. 90. Number 90. Wonderful Bible, <laughs> Book of God. May that book open unto us today yes. so that we can see how much God loves us yes. and we can be free from all the problems of life. Yes. We sing this song heartily. Reason is because the devil doesn't want you to be happy. And the first point is to shut your mouth from singing. The moment you can sing, you shut the mouth of the devil. Yes. So we need to shut the mouth of the devil yes. by opening our own mouth. So don't let the mouth of let don't let the devil shut your mouth, but you shut the mouth of the devil, open your mouth and sing to the glory of God, and his name shall be glorified. Okay, let's listen to this tune by the orchestra, and then we will take um, all the three verses. But the third verse, we will stand up to sing it, and we will remain standing when Brother Benson will come and lead us in prayer. Number 90, verse. Three verses. Let's listen to the tune.
we want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for seeing us through from January till today. Thank you for the risen Jesus. Thank you for the salvation of our souls. Thank you for the word of life. Thank you for giving us the confidence in your word that truly you are God indeed. I say by thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, as many as people that are here today with beautiful faces, so our challenge is different. But we have come to the source of joy. Amen. Lord, today we want to thank you. Amen. Because you are going to rain joy abundant in Jesus' Amen. name. You are going to dispel all, all, all pressures, all frustrations, Amen. all sicknesses, Amen. all doubts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, the preacher will be coming forth soon. Lord, as the word is coming forth, let it give us more encouragement. Amen. Back the speaker up. Amen. Let the spirit of God come down. Amen. Let the spirit of God do the work. Amen. Let there be salvation. Amen. Let there be sanctification. Amen. Let there be healing. Amen. Let there be healing of the soul. Amen. Let there be healing of the body. Amen. Let there be healing in our homes. Amen. Let there be healing in our economy. Amen. Let there be healing all around. Amen. Let there be revival. Amen. Thank you for you have done this. And many more we ask in Jesus' name. Good morning, people of God. Good morning, people of God. God bless you. Um, you are welcome to our Sunday devotional service. And we are glad that we are very glad that you have come to worship and fellowship with us today. I will pray that God will bless you all. Amen. Also, we use this opportunity to extend our welcome greetings to those who are visiting us for the first time, including those that are joining us online, prob probably now, or that they will see our program later, that God Almighty will bless them all. Amen. This is uh, Apostolic Church that is located at number 13, Penhill Road. DA53EP Bexley. Um, this afternoon, okay, I would like us to know that if we observe, our pastor is not here. Our pastor and his family, they are with our brethren in Scotland, particularly in Glasgow, uh, to worship with them there. And we pray that God will bless their worship. Yeah. Also, Brother Francis is also in Birmingham with his wife to worship with our brethren there. We pray that God will bless their worship. Yeah. And you and I, we are here in Bexley. Yes. May God bless us too. Yeah. May God worship with us too. Yeah. May God manifest himself in our midst. Yeah. Okay, this afternoon, we are going to have children's church at 4 p.m., which we uh, combine together with uh, family prayer meeting from 4.30, but our children will start first, and then from 5 o'clock, the adults will take up the family prayer. Um, this is very important. Please endeavor to be in that uh, prayer meeting, and we pray that God will bless you. Amen. In the course of this week, we're going to have the following meeting. Uh, we will have Bible study on Tuesday with our group in Medway at 7.30 p.m., and with our group here in Bexley on Wednesday, the same time, 7.30 p.m. The topic we are going to look at is about the power in one name. And we are advised to read before the time of the Bible study, uh, the Acts of Apostles chapter 3 and chapter 4, because we are always a kind of short of time, so we all get ourselves prepared before the Bible study ahead, so that we can both be able to participate effectively in the class. This week, Friday, if Jesus tarry, we're going to have prayer meeting again for all uh, the all our sundry, every one of us, at 8 p.m. And on Saturday, our women will gather together from 8 in the morning for prayer meeting, uh, actually virtually or presently in person <laughs> here, whichever way, we pray that God will bless that prayer meeting. Amen. And for next week, if Jesus tarry on Sunday, um, we will have our Sunday school class for all ages, 10 in the morning as we did today, and our Sunday devotional service as we are doing presently is going to take place at 11.15 a.m. There is going to be, next Sunday, a congregational meeting, but that one will take place at 2 p.m. We are telling us now so that we can prepare that we don't rush home. There is a meeting 
for all of us, 2 p.m. next Sunday. And this is basically to pass an information to us about the progress of the church that God has provided for us uh, and the development of all the projects. And next Sunday also, um, we're going to have a prayer meeting 5 p.m. in the evening. We are uh, just trying to make us realize that uh, the annual camp meeting registration is now due if you haven't done so. And we are advised to do our deposit of 50 pounds per person so that we know that you are definitely <coughs> going to be there. And this registration deadline is uh, end of this month of April. And the payment, the balance of the payment, we are expected it is paid by the end of uh, next month, the month of May. Uh, we are advised to check the notice board on the way out to see the list of the name of the people that have been identified as those who have registered. So if you have registered and your name is not on the list, please see our brother or light on who can help us with that. Also, take note that there is an updated registration list on notice board, okay? So in case anything is not clear or your name is not there, light on Abimbola will be there to uh, help us. Our service will now continue with the first special. It's a choir, I will tell the world. May God empower us to be able to tell the world Amen. about Jesus Christ. After that, that, that choir number, we will listen to a Bible reading from Brother Samuel Oretuga. And then there will be a second special song. It's a soloist by Sister Chinjiri Umwosu. And then we'll listen to the word of God. We pray that God will bless the message. Amen. And because of that, when the message comes to an end, we will uh, like to encourage everyone to stay behind a little while and pray over what we have done all throughout today, especially the sermon, so mm -hmm. that we don't go empty-handed. And we pray that God will bless us for that. Amen. So we now listen to the choir rendition. <laughs>
Our scripture reading for this uh, devotional service is taken from Psalm 19, verses 7 to 11. Psalm 19, verses starting from verse 7. 19, 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, yes. making wise the simple. Amen. Eight. The statutes of the Lord are right, yes. rejoicing the heart. Amen. The commandment of the Lord is pure, yes. enlightening the eyes. Nine. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Ten. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb, eleven and the last. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Cheap. 
On our Bibles to the Epistle of Paul the Apostle to Timothy, Second Timothy, Second Epistle, Second Timothy, Chapter Three, Verses Twelve to Seventeen, Second Timothy, Chapter Three. Verses 12 to 17. 12. Yea, and all that we live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast lent them. 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Amen. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto <coughs> all good works. Uh, we thank God for another opportunity he has given us to be in his presence. May his name be glorified. Amen. In the time that we have ahead of us, we want to consider the infallible word of God. The infallible word of God. Wonderful Bible. The word of God. Um, the second, the, the opening text that we've read, written by Paul the Apostle, to his um, son in faith, Timothy. This letter, written around AD 66 to 67, was the second letter that he wrote to him. And Paul the Apostle wrote this letter when he was anticipating his martyrdom. He knew that his time was coming to an end. And then he wrote this letter to Timothy. Uh, for, I mean, some of us have had this testimony before, and I'm sure some of us uh, have probably heard it. 
Um, for people that were fortunate or blessed to know like the few minutes or days that they are going to spend um, before dying, maybe on their deathbed, uh, death um, they want to make sure that whatever they say in that short period of time, it, it's got to be something very important. It's something that they want the hearers not to forget. Now, this is very important. I want you to pay particular attention to it. So when Apostle Paul was right directing this uh, to Timothy, I, I'm sure it was to inspire him and to strengthen his faith. He, 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 he wanted to let Timothy know that you need to take the scripture seriously. If you've been doing it, you need to do it more. You know, before this time, I mean, he wrote the first episode. And first, if you look at in 1 Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4, verse 16, 1 Timothy 4, verse 16, First Timothy 4, verse 16, we see there were, again, Apostle Paul exalting Timothy here that take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing these, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So Apostle Paul had said it before. Now he's saying it again. He, you know, when someone is at that stage of their life, where they, 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 he or she has only got maybe a few days left or a few weeks, it's either of two things that will be happening. Is that such a person is regretting? That maybe, oh, I haven't done this. Maybe I should have done this. Or maybe I should have done more of this. Or the person, He's saying, thank God for these and these and these that I've done. And that person will be like encouraging those, the person will be leaving behind that you need to do this. You need to pay attention to this. And I, 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 I just think in my, in my mind that there must be a reason that Apostle Paul was emphasizing on this. He says in the opening text that we read, all scriptures, all in verse um, um, 16 of that, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. The Bible is profitable to you. The Bible is profitable to me. I believe that Apostle Paul wanted to just re-emphasize to Timothy that make sure that your foundation is not shaken. The word of God is our foundation. Yes. Uh, it's very, very important that we, we bear that in mind. Psalms 11.3 tells us, Psalms 11.3, <coughs> if the foundations be destroyed, what, what can the righteous do? It's just like a building. If this foundation is weak, you can build anything you like on top of it. That thing is going to crumble. But if the foundation is solid, you can, you can be sure that what you build on it will last. Even if someone makes a mistake and builds something not good on it, they can knock it down and build again. Because the foundation is solid. Uh, we, we want to pray that God will help us. The infallible word of God, the Bible, is very, very important. I want to believe that Apostle Paul will be thinking, this is the inspired word of God. It's the authoritative rule of faith and conduct for Christians. It's the, you know, the, the inspired word of God for you and for me. It, it, it changes not. The Bible provides us with directives from who? From God himself concerning how we should worship him and how we should serve him. The Bible is completely free from error. From Genesis to Revelation, there is no 
error in it at all. The Bible gives us the true history of the creation of heaven, of earth, of humanity, and it doesn't stop there. The Bible accurately foretells the destiny of you and of men and everything that God has created. This, you know, heart that you and I, we are sitting on, the Bible tells us what is going to happen to it in the latter hand. The Bible is the covenant between you and God, right. between me and God. That's the contract. That is what <laughs> the word of God, when that time comes for someone who faces, who, who delays and you know, decides to say, I'm not going to get saved now. When that time comes for judgment, this is what God was going to use. This is the covenant. This is the agreement that you and me have. You know, the Bible is all sufficient yes. to instruct us and guide us in the ways of righteousness. We don't need any other thing. That's right. We can live our life according to this Bible and be sure that face to face we will see God and he will welcome us home. This Bible has um, old covenants, and it's got the new covenant in it. Of course, we know, Bible scholars, we know what's in the old uh, uh, covenant, Testament. the commandment, the Old Testament, which is the same thing as covenant. Yes. The testament is the same thing as covenant. <coughs> we have in it the commandment, the rituals of the sacri sacrificial system, all the prophecies, you know, everything in the Old Testament foreshadowing and foretelling us what was the, that better covenant that was going to come? Jesus Christ. Right. And then we have the New Testament. When Jesus Christ gave himself on the cross of Calvary and paid that price that you and I celebrated you know, last week that we remembered, you know, Jesus Christ opened the gates. Right. We are told in the Bible that the, 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 uh, the veil of the temple divided into two, from top to bottom, giving us unlimited direct access to Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ himself fully sanctioned this Bible. Uh, may God help you and me to take the Bible seriously. He sanctioned it by quoting extensively from the Bible. If you go into the New Testament, you will you, you see a lot of texts where Jesus Christ said, have you not read? In the, in, the, in the scripture. We, we, let, let's take one of, the, one of those, um, example, Matthew 29. When the Sadducees came to him with a question about resurrection. Matthew 29, 22. Uh, let's read 29 to 32. Matthew 22, 29 to 32. 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do hear, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. They are touching the resurrection of the dead, Hear this again. Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, no. but of the living. Oh, yes. Jesus Christ sanctioned the scriptures. Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May God help you and me yes. to take the Bible seriously. How about the apostles and believers of the early church? They also quoted from the Old Testament, stating that it was the authority on all questions of faith, designating it as the scripture. As we see in the, uh, open, our opening text uh, from um, the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, all scriptures, not some of them. And this is why I will encourage us as well. In, 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 
Let's stick to the King James Version. There are some versions of the Bible where that all has been removed. Stick to the King James Version. All scriptures um, have been given by God. Aside from this, there are internal evidences in the scripture that tells that tell us that this scripture is the infallible word of God. There is no error, no mistake at all in the Bible. It's the absolute, it's that one absolute authority. You know, the content of the Bible, it tells us, it indicates that it's, it's divine origin. Everything from Genesis to Revelation comes from God. Yes. The Bible contains 66 books forming the Old and the New Testament. Guess what? They were written over a period of approximately 1,600 years by nearly 40 authors in different languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, and in variety of social, economic, geographical, and political con conditions. <laughs> in this Bible, we have history, we have prophecies, we have poetry, we have music, we have moral imperatives, we have literature, we have a lot more addressing Diverse issues. Yeah. Yes, it's a one unified book. Yes. I praise God for that. Amen. A book written over a period of 1,600 years, 40 authors, covering different things, and there is no contradiction at all in it. Wonderful. That can only be God. Yes. The origin of that can only be God. Yes. T tell me another book that, that can, you know, that, that, that compares to that. I, I haven't found one. May, may God help us to appreciate Amen. the Bible. Amen. How about the prophecies in the Bible within its pages? Hundreds of them, of predictions about individual nations, about cities, about people, Concerning Jesus Christ alone, in terms of his uh, birth, where he will be, by, he will be giving birth to um, uh, his death, his resurrection, in the Bible we have over 300 prophecies about Jesus Christ alone. And all those prophecies, some have been fulfilled, and some, the rest, will be fulfilled. Yes. If you open your Bibles to Micah 5.2, you can see one of, one of these uh, prophecies, Micah 5, 2. Micah 5, 2. <coughs> but thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Amen. Was that fulfilled? Yes. yes. To the letter. This is, you know, when, when people forecast, they can say, like, maybe 50% is going to rain, or 70% of this, and this. With prophecies in the Bible, they are 100%. Yes. It's 100% accuracy. Yes. May God help you and me Amen. to believe. There is no more reasonable way to explain the fulfilled prophecies of the Bible than divine origin. It, they, it can, things like that can only come from someone who knows that I just need to say it. It's done. It's only God that will put something that has not happened in past tense. It hasn't happened, but it's, it, it says in the past tense. Because it's happened. As far as God is concerned, it's done. Yes. Nothing, nothing on earth can stop God from doing anything that he proposes to do. Amen. It's my prayer this morning that God will bless you. Amen. We have external evidences as well. We have external evidences you know, to prove the veracity of the scriptures. You know, events recorded in the Bible can be verified. Archaeological findings you know, ancient writings, they are there 
to support everything that is in the Bible. I by the fact that this Bible, they have not been able to destroy it. No. They have not been able to destroy it. They've tried. They've tried to, to attack it. You know, rulers, seculars, and religions, you know, skeptics, they decry it. Um, you know, secular press, they do all sorts of things. They just, all sorts of things from the beginning. But the Bible is here. Yes. Amen. This is the most widely circulated book. Yes. Oh, all glory and honor be to God. Yes. That is for a reason. It's for you and it's for me. Yes. Oh, may God help us. Amen. Oh, clearly the word of God has been supernaturally protected for you and for me. How about the incontestable evidence that this Bible, for people that believe in it, and their lives have been transformed. Amen. I can tell you, I'm, a, I'm, I'm one of them. Yeah. There are addicts, there are people, criminals, whose lives have been transformed, not gradually, but in a moment. Yes. Because they believe the Bible. Yes. I, it is my prayer that you will believe the Bible. Amen. Oh, may, may God help you. Amen. No other book can make such a claim. It's only the Bible. No wonder, no wonder that David, under the inspiration of God, wrote that psalm that we read in our, our scripture reading. Let's go back to it, Psalm 19. Psalm 19 uh, from verse 7. Here we see where David started by declaring the glory of God using creations in that, in that verse 19. But he shifted his attention in verse 7 into God's word that the law of the Lord is perfect. Yes. This Bible is perfect. Yes. Oh, it's converting the soul. There is nothing to be added to it. There is nothing to take away from it. If you read it and you hear it and you study the word of God, it gives you more than intellectual benefits. Yes. It will convert your soul. The statutes of the Lord are right, making simple the wise. Oh, sorry, before I go into that, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. It's sure, it's dependable, it's reliable. You can rely on the Bible and be sure that you are on your way to heaven. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The word of God is sure. I say it's reliable. You can be confident that the word of God will not deceive you. There, there, is, there is no getting it wrong when it comes to the Bible. There are so many books out there. You need answer to one question, but what you get is confusion. But with the Bible, you can be sure that it won't deceive you. God will not deceive you. Oh, Psalm 119 verse 89 tells us, forever, yes. oh Lord, your word is what settled in heaven. Oh, it does the work of making the wise simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. God's word and commands contain within it everything that is right. Everything. Everything that is right, and you find joy in it. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Why will it not be pure? Because it comes from God Himself, yes. the pure God, the holy God. May God help you to cling to the Bible. Yeah. May God help me to cling to the Bible. Yeah. Though all else may be taken, if we cling to the Bible and we let this Bible be our guide every single day of our lives, oh, there is, guide, there is I can guarantee you, on the authority of the word of God, it will make your way prosperous. Yes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Amen. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous all together. 
And we are told there, more to be desired a day than gold. Yes. Yay, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honey comb. May God help us to give the Bible the priority that it deserves. Amen. How much time do I spend studying the word of God? That God has put in place to nourish my soul. How much time do you spend? Compared to the things of what? The uh, th things of this world. The honey. The honey comb. Things, pleasures of this world. Uh, may, may God help us. Amen. It is in this Bible that we are told, as I said earlier, the destiny of each and every one of us. In this Bible, we are told about creation. Genesis 1.27 tells us, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. When God created human beings, there was no confusion. But what do we have today? Gender doesn't define people anymore. You see a woman, you don't know whether it's a woman or a man, whether it's a man. Let people confuse themselves, but the word of God is true. Yes. When a child is born, there is no confusion about the gender of that, of that child. That word of God tells us that you and I were created in the image of God. That is very important. In the image of God, we have undying soul. The destiny, where you will end up, where we end up, depends on how, what I do with the word of God. The Bible tells us that there is no other way to make heaven than to receive that grace of salvation that only Jesus Christ gives. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to uh, Hebrews 2. We'll read verses 1 to 4. Hebrews 2, verses 1 to 4. Hebrews 2, verses 1 to 4. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have had, including the ones that you've had today, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, three, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. This is the only way of escape. Yes. And it's my prayer that if you are yet to uh, be forgiven of your sin, that is what salvation means. It's about receiving forgiveness for the sins that you've committed. If you are not there yet, I pray that today will be your day. Amen. I pray that you will believe the Bible and then God will save your soul. Amen. You can press on and receive sanctification. It is also in the Bible. Yes. That the root of sin can be removed. Yes. The Adamic nature. It, it is something that sin is not your fault. It was when Adam fell in the garden that that thing started. That we want you to be angry to do this and to do things that are contrary to the it's not your fault, but you can pray to God and God can remove that yes. from you. It's in the Bible that we all have individual responsibility. Oh, forget about your parents, forget about your children, forget about your husband or your wife. Individual responsibility yes. to make sure that we make our way right with God. There is no eternal security no. in the Bible. No. If you have been saved, you need to remain saved mm -hmm. to make heaven. Mm -hmm. And God can keep you. Yes. There are, if, if, if you are in God's, you know, in the center of God's will, this Bible has countless promises yes. that you can come to God this morning and lay hold on to yes. and say, God, you have promised in your word that you can heal me. Yes. 
You, can, you have promised that you can provide for my needs. You have promised that you can keep me. You have, you have promised that you can encourage me. You, that, diverse. They are diverse yes. promises. Yes. So we, we, we just we, we, we want to take this opportunity that we have today to come to God. You know, as we sing the closing song, that God, you have said this in your word. Do it to me. Amen. And God will answer your prayer. Amen. God bless us. Come forth. profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. We want to make that heaven. As many as has had faith coming by hearing, hearing the word of God. We add you, Lord. You have spoken, Lord. Make us doers of it, O Lord. Not hearers only, but we want to be doers of it, O Lord, that we may profit from it. That at the end of our life, this Bible will not stand against us. That we will profit from it and we will make heaven. Save soul this morning. Amen. Sanctify, O oh Lord. Baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. Making our election sure. Those of us that have been saved for years and years, we want to renew our covenant with you. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord. By the time we leave this tabernacle, we want to be happy and be joyful. The joy of salvation to bubble in our heart. Lord, our name written in the book of life. Do it for us, O oh Lord. And more than we can ask. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you. 